So finally, after eight weeks of tough market, we finally have one good week. And of course, it is due to the PCE, which is the Personal Consumption Expenditure, which is an inflation report that the Federal Reserve loves to use, okay, as compared to the CPI, which is something that we talk about a lot on this channel. So let's go for some news today. <laughs> you know, pretty good. All right. So uh, the Fed's favorite inflation measure rose 4.9% in April in a sign that price increase could be slowing. So, of course, we have to talk more about this. This is uh, incredible. Okay, first of all, the headline PCE rose about 0.2%, uh, which is a huge reduction, okay, because in March, it went up 0.9%. 0.2, 0.9, okay, pretty good, okay. Um, of course, they're also talking about how uh, consumer spending is up by 0.9%. Um, and, yeah, everything is basically in line, um, kind of more so showing that inflation basically peaked. And it's kind of funny because I talked about this uh, in my CPI prediction video uh, for April as well, for this month, uh, where, where we actually saw the PCE. Uh, so it's actually quite incredible because I kind of expected, uh, I kind of predicted that, you know, inflation is going to peak as well. But of course, I don't think that this prediction is uh, as... Uh, as interesting as any other uh, prediction simply <laughs> because, you know, this is quite easily predicted uh, because the writing was on the wall and we kind of realized where the uh, peak of inflation is actually is if you keep on reading all the reports and such. Uh, so yeah, pretty good. Uh, however, you will still see uh, crypto assets going down, sadly. Uh, but yeah, you know, other than that, everything else is basically going up. Your, your SPY is doing healthily. Okay, your QQQ is doing well, your DJA is doing well, so your Dow Jones, all your indexes doing pretty well. Okay, the SPY right now is up 1.46%, the, the QQQ is up 2.2%. Okay, so pretty good. Even Tesla themselves is up about 6%. Okay, and of course, uh, looking at all the other risk on assets, let's just say the growth tech stocks, let's look at Snapchat, the one that fought, fell 40% on the other day, uh, right now it's up about 1%, so eh, not the not, not the best. Uh, so far, it's up about uh, 5 to 6%. Uh, you got your Palantir, your fan favorite, uh, about 4%. Um, you know, let's look a little bit at oil, uh, Occidental, petroleum, up about 0.5%. Uh, so yeah, pretty interesting, pretty interesting. Uh, but of course, uh, right now we're starting to see a little bit of a decline in price. Uh, but I do think that this is more due to uh, capitulation in the market. Uh, people are starting to see that, you know, hey, this is great. Okay, this is great that everything is going up. How about I just get a little bit out of the market just in case? Because let's be honest here, okay? Like I said before, even though we actually got a very, very good PCE result here, which is showing us the personal consumption um, expenditure in an inflation report that is actually good news, okay? Similar to how the CPI is, uh, similar to how, um, like, CPI is similar to how um, the FOMC, all of those as well is the same thing, okay? All of them are basically going to show you good results or good um, data, okay, for the short term. Afterwards, then basically everything kind of uh, people start to uh, kind of price into the market. People have more fear in the market. Recessionary fears is still very, very valid. Okay, if you have not been, uh, have not watched the video, watch the video where I say watch this before investing into this market. Um, I basically, you know, just highlighted all the all the catalysts, all the bearish potential catalysts for you to actually look at. Um, and of course, inflation is definitely one of them. So just having one catalyst out of the way, we still have a lot more that we have to worry about, okay? So we're not completely out of the woods just yet, but this is pretty good. This is pretty good, all right? All right, so let's move on to the normal one. Okay, household boosted spending in April, but drew heavily on savings. Okay, I do I do want to touch upon this a little bit more because it's, we, we all understand that, you know, consumer spending went up by 0.9% and people like to argue the fact, of course, it's going to go up by 0.9%. If prices are going up, people are going to spend more, okay? And yes, that's, that's correct, okay? But at the same time, when people are spending more money, okay, all, more money is getting pumped into the economy. And when the economy is better, essentially everyone, everyone gets a little bit more cut to um, how, the, how well the economy actually works. So I do think that it can make sense that, you know, um, of course, you know, if household boost, uh, spending actually boosts, consumer spending boosted, 
fair. But over here in the Wall Street Journal article, they said, drew heavily on savings. This is, this, is a, this is a bigger one, okay? I do think that it's very, very interesting. Consumer spending went up by 0.9% last month. Uh, said the saving rate fell to 4.4%, the lowest in 14 years, from a downwardly revised 5% of the, pri uh, the prior month, suggesting that many Americans are tapping their savings to offset costs increase from higher inflation. And I can totally see that being a new bearish catalyst all over again, okay? Because I think... Even for myself, I'm also drawing from my savings and my investment in order for me to actually uh, continue with my own life, okay? Of course, I still have my job, uh, but because of, uh, because of the nature of my job, I don't get paid uh, as frequently uh, as I want it to be. Uh, so I don't draw a monthly pay. Uh, so chances are, usually, I actually kind of have to take uh, uh, some money from my investment. I need to take some money from uh, my multiple other investment, actually. Then, of course, then um, I would also have to dig into my savings or my emergency funds uh, in order for me to continue living my own life, be it for paying the bills or just going out for dinners and such. But uh, so I can totally see where this is coming uh, coming from. Uh, you know, savings rate fell to 4.4%, the lowest in 14 years, uh, which is crazy. Okay, uh, we are we are expecting the saving saving rate to be actually quite high. We're expecting saving rate to be at least like you know like eight ten percent usually. Uh, for the prior month, it was actually down to five percent. Now it's down to four point four percent. So of course, if the saving rate continue to go down, uh, that's that's gonna sound some alarms because you know when people do not have enough savings, um, it will potentially cause uh, some form of, some form of a ripple effect to the economy as well. So I I, I do fear I do fear, I do fear that you know as much as consumer spending is going up, this is still a solid concern that we need to have. Okay, a closely watched U.S. inflation reading meanwhile decelerated slightly for the first time this year, but remained near a four-decade high. Consumer price rose six point three percent in April from a year earlier, down to six point six percent in March. As measured by the uh, co commerce in the department's uh, personal consumption expenditure price index. Uh, so yeah, cool, cool. All right, let's move on. Uh, stocks, uh, stocks market moves higher as S&P 500 and NASDAQ rises. Uh, so yeah, of course, it rises due to the whole inflation report. Of course, right now, I'm actually uh, reporting this whole thing about 11, almost 11 p.m. or so. I just came back from a dinner with some friends. Uh, you know, it's Friday night. And also... Uh, on Monday is going to be Memorial Day, uh, Memorial Day. So um, there won't be any market open, and I will not be posting anything actually. Uh, so I can actually take some rest, and of course, uh, I'll also most likely be preparing for the video on Wednesday. So uh, just stay tuned for that. Of course, yes, tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be a new video. Stay tuned for that. All right. Anyway, uh, bets against U.S. Treasury rate in gains as Fed raises rates. Uh, I, I don't think there's much to really read more about it because um, a lot of people were saying that, you know, you should just bet against the US government debt. Uh, and yeah, it kind of worked out for a lot of people who actually did, did that. Okay. Uh, so yeah, late last year, Mr. Bax uh, plowed money from his personal brokerage account into an exchange trader fund offered by the asset manager ProShares designed to bet against treasuries. It rises just as you do when long dated bond prices fall for the first stretch of 2022. This is exactly what happened. Uh, so yeah, pretty cool. Went up 22%. Okay, okay. Uh, the performance compares with a 14% loss after dividends uh, in the S&P 500 and a slimmer loss for the Bloomberg US Aggregate Bond Index. Uh, so yeah, a riskier one because it uses leverage, blah, blah, blah. Went up 47%. Wow, okay. Uh, for people who are, you know, if you're, if you're getting into a fund, going up 47% is pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, all right, let's move on to the next one, which is SPAC. A warning, they may go bust. Uh, more than two dozen companies say they may not survive much longer. So, you know, like I said before, specs, pretty dangerous. And we all know a lot of specs as it is, okay? We know SoFi is a spec. We know Palantir is a spec. We know Grab is a spec. Uh, we know Lucid is a spec. Uh, we know Rivian. Oh, no, Rivian is not a spec. Rivian was a spec, yeah. Uh, we know ba, 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 um, Archer was a spec. So, yeah, there's a lot of specs. Um, Matterport, oh my God, <laughs> horrible. So, yeah. Uh, the spec boom brought a wave of companies to the uh, public market, promising years of rapid growth and the profits to investors. Uh, two years since the boom began, many of these companies are already warning they may go bust. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I think there's nothing much for us to really talk much about specs simply because I actually covered specs quite a lot here. Uh, and I've always said that, you know, specs is not going to be doing very, very well. So, all right, next up, Zlingo Sapphire, the CEO, responds to question of mystery payments. Company has hired firm to investigate claims of serious issues, such as startup, a CEO terminated after accounting investigation. Uh, let's see. Uh, MTD Bose, who was fired last week as Chief Executive Officer of the Singapore startup Zilingo, says she will keep fighting to clear her name. The fashion e-commerce platform terminated her employment after an investigation into claims of what it's called serious financial ir irregularities. And it said re uh, reserve the rights to pursue appropriate legal action. Uh, so apparently, uh, payments of several service product providers of more than $7 million that were signed by her without the knowledge of the senior executive according to the people familiar with the matter. There's not a single payment made by Zilingo that did not have the proper document or either the finance tech or operation teams were not aware of. Uh, I feel like my baby has been taken away from me without giving me a proper explanation or chance to fight for her back. I'm grieving and I'm fighting for myself simultaneously. Uh, okay, okay. So yeah, basically fraud. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Uh, Singapore startup are already feeling impact of the Zilingo drama. Um, so this Olivia Paul, blah, 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 blah. Singapore loses a star. It's a saga that rocked a city-state entire tech scene as recently as two months ago. And, and Kitty Bose was Singapore's uh, preeminent startup leader. As of last week, she's out of the job. Uh, okay. Uh, Male-dominated industry, blah, blah, blah. This is a shrug. News world suspended. Triggering. Okay. Text minutes, yeah, okay. Honestly, I, I, I'm not, I, I didn't follow the Zilingo drama. I, I saw I, I saw the entire news and such, but I wasn't really interested in it, so I didn't really care about it much. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I don't know. All right, anyway, last news uh, by CNBC. Let's go. Uh, Twitter director Egon Egon uh, Durban won't leave the board after the shareholders voted to put him. <laughs> what? Uh, Twitter director won't leave the board after all, even though shareholders voted to put him from the position. Uh, Twitter said his board believed Durant failed to receive shareholder support because of his director role on several other companies' board, would reduce his commitment on other com public company boards. What? Okay, honestly, you know, do you know what this actually sounds like? This sounds like Egon Durban, this Twitter director. What he's trying to do here is that he knows that Elon's gonna 10x Twitter and he wants a part of the 10x Twitter. So he's like, nah, 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 I'm staying. I'm staying, I'm staying here no matter what, okay? I wanna be here with the Elon effect, okay? I don't care, I don't care. I, I'm, I'm staying, you guys can try to kick me out, okay? I, I'm, I'm gonna try to match all your conditions, all your criteria, but I'm staying for the Elon pump, okay? <laughs> I think that's basically what he's trying to say. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's kind of, kind of cringe. Kind of cringe. All right. Anyway, that's that's all for the news. Actually, uh, there's not much uh, that's actually going on in the market, um, surprisingly. Um, but yeah, you know, the market is kind of flip flopping them again. Uh, so far, kind of going down. Uh, Spy trying to come down a little bit. Uh, QQQ trying to come down a little bit as well. Uh, so yeah. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we manage to see the market continue. And add it on a high. Hopefully, you know we really need to snap the losing streak. Uh, otherwise, we are otherwise we are actually doomed. Because think about it this way: if today we have one of the most, the potentially one of the best catalysts for us, where inflation basically peaked on one of the most important inflation report that the Federal Reserve uses, if this report cannot even get us to green. After eight weeks of losses, what does that actually mean for the market? You know? So yeah, I, I honestly hope that we get a green today. But hey, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.